Per il dottor Farouk al Bas, geologo e planetologo, la sfida delle piramidi è tutta particolare, ricatturare l'aria respirata dai faraoni 5.000 anni fa. Dal suo laboratorio americano ci ha spiegato come si svolgerà questa complessa caccia dove si uniscono passato e futuro. We're going to be able to use something that is identical to the lunar drill. That is the drill that was used by the astronauts to sample the moon. And why? Because that drill does not use any water, does not use any fluids, does not use any oils at all. You do not want anything at all to mix. In questi scavi del 2000 il laboratorio diventa l'archeologo. We have done three things in the laboratories. The very first one was to really understand what the, the material around the chamber is, and that is for the limestone itself. So we obtained samples from the first boat that was opened of the rock, that is the housing around the, uh, the chamber, and we've started looking into this limestone, how hard it is, and all of its characteristics. Why? Because it really is very important, we have a sample here of the same limestone, to see uh, what is, um, that it is very important to understand the, the rock itself and its hardness and so on, because we are going to intend to, to drill through it, and naturally if one drills through this, we, un we should understand how all of the drilling, the, uh, the properties of that uh, material. The second thing is to understand the uh, boat itself, the boat material, the wood from which the, the boat is, because the wood itself can degas, can send all kinds of, uh, of gases in the atmosphere inside. So we started also by studying samples of the, uh, from the wood from the uh, first uh, boat, and these are uh, pieces of uh, cedar wood from which the first boat was made, and all of that is, uh, has been uh, taken very, very carefully, and we're going to send it to laboratories, and these uh, laboratories, and the laboratories will study the molecular structure of the wood. The uh, third laboratory uh, testing is uh, conducted right here in, uh, near the Boston area, where we have all of the data that was collected by the site in uh, Giza are now being looked at with the computers to see all of the profiles of what went on in the, uh, in the field to figure out what the shape of the cavity is and what the uh, profile of the contents might be. And we need all of that to plan the sites for drilling of the holes. The technology that we are going to utilize in uh, the photog photography in this case is really the technology that came from photographing the surface of Mars. It is the, the, the basically the technology that we had on the Viking uh, camera, which is called electro-optics, meaning instead of using film, we have at the focal plane of the lens, we have the lens in here, and instead of using the film here, we have a sensitive plate that has tiny little sensors. And all of these sensors, will one each would look at a, a, a segment of the scene and then transmit that information directly to a, to a tape, which, and then it will be recorded on a computer tape, and then we can look at the whole thing through computers. The most significant thing is that this is the very first time that we are going to apply this high-tech science into archaeology in Egypt. And I personally believe that this is going to start a whole new trend. We don't have to, to break into places to find out what they are. So I really think this is just the a beginning of the use of remote sensing in archaeology.